Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tucker and Crowley Report. I'm joined by Franklin Tucker, longtime editor of the Belmontonian, and I am Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, what's first up this week? Well, we should talk a little bit about the uh, new tax um, rate uh, for uh, single-family homes in Belmont. All right, and this is set by the Board of Assessors? That's right. Okay. Uh, this is maybe the last year that the elected Board of Assessors will be doing this, Okay. as we will be going in January to a special town meeting to see if we're going to have an elected, uh, to have an appointed uh, Board of Assessors rather than the current elected one. But uh, for so for this year, we have a new uh, tax rate, and it's been a, a substantial uh, decrease from 11 dollars and 24 cents per thousand val assessed value to ten dollars and 54 57 cents so the tax rate is decreased and some some may think that's good news and it's not bad news but it doesn't mean that your taxes are going down. no in fact the uh, the only reason they're, they're drop they're dropping the rate itself is because the values in, in belmont have gone over 10 have gone up by 10 percent so, so so no matter how you look at it you're going to be paying more uh in terms of a tax all right, Franklin. And and, and, and we have another uh, uh, one event that they always have with the uh, assess uh, when when they talk about the uh, new tax rate, and that is the average uh, the average price for a house in, in Belmont, and that's increased to one point six one five million dollars. Let me repeat that one point six million dollars. That's the average single family home. That's right. It's, it's uh, the median and and uh, the median price is actually a little bit lower. But the average price is is uh, at this at this level. It's really um, um, uh, interesting because we didn't have that many sales. We didn't have as many sales as we should have had last year. So they had to basically go two years in in terms of getting the data to get this to get this average value. It's uh, it's something that we um, haven't seen in a while. You know, and and you you would think that because we have a, a small inventory, that uh, prices would go down. But no, not in this environment. And it's it's a very surprising where it's a, a bit of a mixed um, a, a bit of a, a funny uh, environment that we have right now in terms of real estate, and that is because you know we have very high uh, mortgage rates, historic mortgage rates. We have a very limited number of, um, of houses that are for sale, and yet we see a, a, a big spike of over ten percent in the in the value of homes. It's it's kind of unusual, but what is it? All right, and then, and then Franklin, I do want to ask about the commercial tax rate. That's uh, uh, that's right. With the the, 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 the uh, for the for the umpteenth year, uh, I think forever, the uh, the uh, where we will basically have a a single tax uh, a tax classification. We won't have one that's separated between residential and commercial. Uh, other towns right next to us, um, um, such as uh, Watertown and Newton and, and other places. Uh, that have a large uh, a commercial base, they will have that um, that that uh, t uh, two uh, two streams basically of uh, tax classifications. And now, um, right now, Belmont is basically has five percent commercial. And when uh, Elizabeth Dion, uh, our, 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 uh, who is on the select board, asked, "How much do we need before we can do this?" Um, uh, Bob Reardon, who has been the longtime um, chief uh, head of the assessors. Uh, said that it needs to be around 30%. So we're a long way from that. Okay. So, um, um, all right, let's, let's move on to our next story then. That sounds good. All right. So um, we have a new dog policy in Belmont. What well, could... it's, it's, it's just being revised. It's going to go before the OREC commission and then before the select board, and then it's still going to be in a draft form. So okay, so it's not it's not formally um, enacted yet. That's right, and 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 uh, what what they're calling it, and it's uh, you know a fun thing to do. You know why why not call it something fun? It's paws in the park, and uh, these paws are of course both uh, leashed and unleashed dogs. So. Um, uh, what what people would have to do is they have to register for the, their dogs. They, they can do it online. Uh, you'll get a you get a collar that says you know you can off leash or or have a leash. You okay. know, um, they didn't give a price tag, so I don't know how much that is. But uh, there, uh, it's it's not really a change from the last one uh, Belmont had, uh, but it was just never um, it was just never uh, enforced. You know, it was just something that they did. I think before COVID, and uh, it just it just fizzled out. People just didn't want to 
listen to it. But now they're going to be much more forward. They're going to get. They're going to try to have as many people as possible to uh, um, help them out. You know, make sure that everybody knows what, what time they can go out and do it. Uh, some things that are going to be um, uh, new is that they're going to have a calendar uh -huh. saying when you can go on to certain parks off leash. Um, there are uh, there's one park, Winbrook, that's going to be. Uh, severely uh, restricted and that's because you have schools okay you have the winbrook school there um so the the, uh, the actual uh, uh four um parks or fields uh are going to be town field grove street winbrook and pq and like uh and, and like the, like uh, uh, um, uh the rec department said during when they made this presentation uh you know winbrook is a unique space due to its abutting the school so they should realize that there's going to be a lot more attention on this. But they said, you know, we don't expect, you know, they're, they're, one thing that's really hurt the, the dog program in, in Belmont is that we have so many youth programs. And the youth programs would always have to go to Grove and, and PQ and they take up a lot of space. And, and you would have a lot of competing um, um, uh, competition between dog owners and, and kid owners, I guess, <laughs> and, 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 they, and their sports programs. Um, but now, because of the high school fields that are opening up behind the middle school, okay. next to the middle school, um, they, they feel that there's going to be some time where, um, you know, not only will dogs have a little bit more, you know, a, a space for their own time, um, but there'll be times where these actual fields, these four fields, will be, uh, will be set aside and let to, let, uh, to rehabilitate. So it, it seems like it's going to be a... a uh, a much more in, uh, focused, a much more uh, intense uh, communications, you know, with a calendar and, and things like that. So it looks like um, Belmont's in, in for a, uh, um, a better dog environment. Right. Uh, it's, it's, I do want to ask you, Franklin, yeah. um, what are, what are the, the prospects for, um, for the new policy going into effect? Or, or what's the process from here? Well, right now it went before the uh, rec uh, the, the rec commission just okay. to know what was what was going on. Now it's going to go to the rec. You know, it went from the rec department to the rec commission, and then it's going to go to the select board. Then it's going to uh, basically be on a trial run for about six months or you know over the summer. Okay. And uh, we'll see what well they'll see what happens there, and if it if it's working, they'll they'll implement it. Okay. So Franklin. But, but also one 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 final thing. All right. And that is, people always ask about dog parks, and there's no indication that a dog park is coming anytime soon, if ever. Because we, because they are, you know, we're using parks. You know, why do you need a, a specialized uh, zone? Well, for a, a, dog, a dog park also would require a dedicated space mm -hmm. that, that I assume couldn't be used by, by kids. That's uh, right. It would be off limits, basically, to everybody but wild dogs. <laughs> All right. So um, we have an override coming up in, you know, on the ballot in April. It's not been decided what... The amount, the, the amount of that override will be, but we have a number of scenarios that are being discussed. What can you tell us, Franklin? On uh, at the last uh, select board meeting, um, Tom Caputo, who used to be a select board member, who is now working with the uh, Warren Committee, um, stated that um, you know he came in with uh, uh, seven scenarios. You know, uh, what if we have better revenue? What if we have uh, limited more exp expenses? What, you know, if we look at all these different scenarios, how could what would this, what would be the, the future of overrides? And they're all bad. <laughs> now, what do you, what do you mean by that? Frank? Man, it's it, we under all the scenarios, we're going to have at least uh, two uh, significant overrides over uh, a three year period. So um, this year would be an override, and in three years we'll need another override. There's no way of getting around it. We're, oh, we're going to be although the override in three years would be smaller that's we right if, if if some assumptions actually do 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 fall in place um one is that um uh once we have a very robust um special ed uh department and special ed program we should see uh the prices for uh, out of district um uh schooling uh actually go down because we will have the the, the fundamental um base work uh, here in town so we can keep a lot more kids in town um do we have any sense of of where we're we're drifting um, with the select board in terms of where they're likely to settle um, on an override number? So I'll I'll go back a couple of meetings and and Mark Palillo um, expressed discomfort. This was at the last budget forum. The, the, expressed the, discomfort with a double digit 
override. Right. He says that's a bridge too far. He made that statement again. He doesn't believe anything over 10% will, will work. Over 10 million? Over yeah. 10 million, I mean. Um, and, um, you know, just listening to people talk on both sides, um, I think there's a, the, the word discomfort is, uh, is something that you're hearing from the town side, uh, especially that they feel that uh, it has to be as small as possible. Um, uh, the uh, schools believe it can be up to $12 million, like they presented two weeks ago. Um, uh, and, and right now, you're, you're, there, there is a compromise going. I mean, after that meeting, uh, Mark Lolo and uh, Jill Geyser, who's the superintendent of schools, were talking, and you could hear the, what they were saying, and, and it was basically, how much can, can you do? You know, and, 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 and what Mark uses the word pro, pro, prioritize. Um, what, uh, what real programs does the schools need to go forward with? Yeah. And and I will mention, too, that Meg Moriarty, the school committee chair at, at last Tuesday's school committee meeting, um, did request that the superintendent, Jill Geyser, take a take a look at some of the things that she's put on the table for for potential ads and think about, you know, perhaps slowing some of those ads, staging them for uh, for later. Mm -hmm. um, Make it, making for an environment in which there are smaller increases over the life of this, what would be a three-year override. Right, and, I, I, and you can see that both sides understand that, that, that they do have to compromise. And it's great that you have uh, uh, Meg Morarty and you have a Mark Pulillo who can really come together, basically, and, and, and make it work. You know, they, they, can, they can get both sides of them where, where the schools will, will, will maybe lengthen out what the, what that, um, what the restor, uh, uh, restore, um, the, <laughs> what is it called? Restoration. The restoration, the restoration budget. Um, and uh, Mark is basically saying, look, three, you know, $3 million is irresponsible in free cash going to an override. You would like to see more go into the override. So there, there is going to be a compromise. And they, everybody's thinking that it's going to be done before the New Year's. I'm not so sure. They may have to go into January before they come with a final, you know, number and, and, and a compromise. But okay. we'll see. In the meantime, um, a campaign has already formed to promote the override. That's right. Invest in Belmont. Mm -hmm. They've got a website up. They've got a mailing list. And um, they are working without knowing exactly what the override number will be. I think I, 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 just by talking to people in town... Um, it, it, it does, it, you know, everybody knows an override is inevitable. It's, it's whether they can accept the amount. They will vote for it up to a point. And I think that's where, why Mark is so adamant by saying, look, we'd love to give $12 million. That would, give us, that would really make the schools, you know, safe for three to four years. But it's just not going to pass. Uh, even though we've had a, a, a large number of people leave town and uh, a large number of people uh, come to the town who have maybe more progressive views and maybe have a little bit more money to go out and um, pay that, but it's still going to be. So it's, it, it's, it's, it really is a, um, to compromise as much as possible on both sides. All right, Franklin. So let's move on and talk about the council, the council on aging. I understand that um, there's a new temporary uh, uh, director in place? Yes, and it's Brandon Fitz, uh, our recreation di uh, director. Um, he, he, knows what's, uh, he knows what's happening at the uh, B Street Center, uh, so he'll take over until the new year when, we'll, when the town will actually go out and find a uh, new director. Um, uh, the current director is going to Lexington, okay. and uh, so wish her very well. And um, uh, Brandon, Brandon is, a, is a really uh, a stellar person. There's a lot of new ideas on his part. Even though he's just an interim man, uh, director, he seems like the, uh, a good fit. All right. So coming from the rec department, will we see an expansion of Tai Chi offerings? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Franklin. You can find more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. Be sure to watch us next time, and we will see you then.